the show with Dan and Joe. This is episode two. This is episode three. This is episode four. This is episode five. Get a pen out, pull up heavy. In the layout, on a Eddie. I got three rows, run the valley. In New Dios, not for valley. Stay that money, I for Perry. I shoot droppers, call me Larry. Then in the Yonkers, I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor, hurry to heaven. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the show with Dan and Joe. This is episode 12. We, tw- 12, we did it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 12. We, oh, man. Six uh, times two. Yeah. Six plus six. Um, okay. Eight plus four. Wow, that's nuts. So, all right, guys. So, as you saw from the title, we have an interview with Jonah Walker today. So, he is a pitcher at Tulane. That'll be the second part of this episode. You guys will see it's all timestamp below. So, we sat down with Jonah. Actually, it was just me. Joe was late. Joe was always running late, dude. Joe is always prioritizing the, the non priorities. Uh, no, he'd work this morning. <laughs> work. Imagine trying to work. This is, this, is, this is the job, and you weren't here. But no, it's okay. Jonah was here. And Stu, in the hashtag Stu. And Jonah was here earlier, so we got that uh, podcast going. It was great. It was actually really cool. Really awesome story about his uh, his recruiting journey going from zero to 20 plus D1 offers literally overnight. Like he told, he told me he had 70 texts from schools that day, the day that he made that tweet, like that night. Wow. Crazy. And like D1s were just calling him at like when he was like asleep. Like he would just wake up to like calls from West Coast teams and stuff. It was wild. But uh, so yeah, that was a cool story. And also we're going to talk about all things baseball news and culture. You guys, uh, you guys get it by now. So yeah, I got some topics, got some hot takes we're going to go through and it's going to be an awesome episode. Thank you guys so much for supporting. Make sure to drop a five star. We hit a hundred. We hit a hundred five star reviews. Yeah. Put, put, something, put something on the screen. Put like, something like, 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 woo. woo. Yeah, so we had 100 five star reviews, so that looks kind of cool. Yeah, so I don't know what else it gets us, but it looks it looks cool. It looks it looks cool. It feels good. Um, so yeah, that's what today is. So let's get right into. Wait, no, how are you doing? Um, I'm a hardworking man. He's a crossing guard. And Imagine just Joe with like a bright orange shirt and on. And I'm just helping. People. I'm helping your kids. I'm helping your family. I'm helping everybody out. I don't want you near my kids. I'm great with kids. Let's get into the first topic of today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys, so the College World Series is starting up. I don't actually know what the day is. Oh, Friday, June 17th. I did know the day because I was going to go, and now I'm not because the tickets are very expensive. But maybe next year. Uh, the, the College World Series is on the way. As we all saw, Notre Dame took down Tennessee, the genius right there. Joe, how do you feel about that take? I mean, I, I feel the same way I, I, I do when I first said it. I mean, it's just stats. It's just, just, it's numbers. just stats. It's just yeah. the facts. Um, wow. Yeah, I don't know. 100%, when yeah. I say something, I'm confident with it. You know? I mean, dude, everyone, you know, you're kind of getting your your due, your due, your due. My due. Yeah, because you've been a lot of hot takes, a lot of people talking shit, and then yep. finally you you hit the nail in the yeah, head. Yeah, that was crazy. You I did. honestly did. And um, yeah, so that's awesome. So I must feel pretty good. Yeah, that, it was great. That I mean, video like doubled in views. Got so many comments just after the Tennessee game. That was a nuts it. game, by the way. Crazy Notre, game. Dude. Notre Dame crazy just like game. outplayed them. Yeah, like it yeah. was just simple as that. So they're a good team, dude. I mean, they could make it far. To be honest, true freshmen went in and closed the door. Yeah. They lost like five yep. innings or yep. four innings. That was really cool. Yep. Um, so good for them, man. Good for Notre Dame. Love to see that. And they're actually the, have the third highest odds to win. According to Caesar Sportsbook, they have the third highest odds to win. They're plus 500 to win the College World Series. Number one is Texas at plus 315, Stanford in second. So it goes, yeah, in that order, Texas, Stanford, Stanford. Notre Dame. And then Ole Miss, you guys are from Ole Miss are up there at seventh. So yeah. second to – wait, why does the Texas A&M have the lowest odds? They're plus 900. Weren't they a top eight team in the country? Uh, yeah, at some point. Maybe just because how I, the t- I don't know probably how bracket lines up. Yeah, or something I don't like know. That. Honestly, That's I really interesting. That I don't know betting anyway. I'm just reading you know, but, odds um, and stuff. Dude, everything I see from literally the, the start of like the regionals and everything is Stanford's been like number two or three and everything, and they just haven't moved. They there's just two. haven't. Yeah, there's two. Like Texas is one now, and Stanford didn't move to one. They're just two. two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Stanford's a good team, man. They're. Uh, I mean, who knows with this thing? And they're Texas, smart. Yeah. Good for you guys. Yeah, good for you guys. Congrats on being. Nerds. I can get in there too. So <laughs> nerds, dude. Yeah, man. So who's your take for one? Who's won the College World Series? Ole Miss. I got. I, got, I, 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 Ole Miss. I have to stick with it yeah, now. Yeah, I said yeah. it once. I gotta say it twice. See, I can dance around. I can pick whoever I want. I have to see. You can. Do you I can, know? and I can, I can say Ole Miss and Stanford. Give me the Cardinal, not Cardinals. Give me the Cardinal. Give me the Cardinal because they're not the Cardinals. They're the Stanford Cardinal. And they're the Cardinal. Um, I'm picking Stanford. That's my roots. Going back to my roots. Um, so I'm putting. I might put some money on Stanford. All right, let's go through some hot takes right now. Uh, I like this one. I just saw this one first. Ole Miss has a chance to win it all. We were just talking about we're talking that. talking about that. So yeah, you're taking Ole Miss. I, I, mean, I uh, think their yeah. lineup's good. They have they have they have a good bullpen. I mean, I think that that they could make it far. I mean, they have veteran leadership. I veteran know leadership as well, dude. Tim good, Elko. Yeah. and good jerseys. Yeah, nice drip. Drip's really important. Stanford has good drip too, though. To be fair, 
They do. They do. They do. The black, Under, the underrated black Stanford drip. jerseys are fine. Underrated drip. Very underrated Yeah, drip. very underrated drip. We didn't even talk about that when Dude. we were talking about it. Yeah, it's going to be cool to see Ole Miss. Someone said Texas is winning at all. I'm sure. Anyone's, yeah. Anyone could if win. Anyone could win. It's called World Series, man. It's crazy. Um, Who is the least odds? The lowest odds is A&M. Right? Oh, you well, said, that yeah, doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know if I'm reading it wrong. Or, I like their I jerseys know. too, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, A&M has nice uniforms. They, they have good the funding, stripes, and they always yeah, have like good fire. boosters and stuff, so yeah. they get some good stuff. Mookie Betts is underrated. Is he underrated right now? I think, I personally, what I think what happened was he was in the Sox. He was like the best player in MLB, like top two, and he was just going a high trajectory, and then he got traded to the, to the Dodgers because the Red Sox organization is a joke. The hype kind of died down a little the, bit. No, he, he was hyped when, the he, hype first, went when up he was first it, yeah, there, yeah, and right. he played really well, and then he kind of kind of just fell off because he played on a star-studded team, right. you know, like kinda the Dodgers is such a star. Yeah, exactly. So we, I think he kind of got stuck in the mix, and he wasn't putting up like – M- um, MVP numbers and now again this year he's doing that like he's balling out this year so I think out. that right now I guess you could say he's underrated because he doesn't really get talked about anymore he, he like doesn't but when he was at his at his best like in Boston like he was perfectly rated I think so I, th- I think that right now I guess you could say he's underrated I agree with that hmm. All right, guys, I want to take a minute to talk about a sponsor of today's video. Actually, the first sponsor that we have ever had on the podcast. So thank you. Shout out to uh, Pro Velocity Bat. So Pro Velocity Bat, you guys have probably seen it on Instagram. It's actually a really cool product. So I hopped on the call with Elijah, who is the founder of uh, the Pro Velocity Bat. He's a young guy. He went to UConn. Like, he played at UConn. Like, he, you know, he, he gets it. He gets the grind and all that stuff. Um, so the Pro Velocity Bat is cool because, like, you swing it, and it's like, it looks like a bat weight, but it has, like, little clips that are, like, rubber that clip on. So you swing it. And and then if they want to get the double click, so if you have a good swing, it goes all the way down to the top end, so it moves up and down, and then it goes back down. So like you swing it, click click, and you know you got through the zone. So if you like cast it though, so if you're like out there, yeah, it yeah, won't yeah. get, it'll just get one click or no clicks because you're not getting that full power. So like click click. Each band he said they've tested it is like seven more miles an hour of exafila or of bat speed. Of oh, bat crazy. Speed, of seven more miles an hour of bat speed. So like you hear the click and it goes click click, and then you put another band on click click and you kind of can work your way up over time so it's really cool really cool product so you can use my code disarm for i think 10 percent off at checkout so thank you to the sponsor of this video pro velocity bat check it out uh provelocitybat.com use code disarm for 10 percent off at checkout and yeah go get your bat speed up all right, guys, we're going to hop over the interview with Jonah right now. It went really well. I, I mean, it was a great story for young guys. Even, like, you know, dads could listen to it and be like, oh, my son. I could promote my son on Twitter. 20-plus D1 offers. Oh, my God, like, Tulane. Wow, that's what I hope people get out of the episode. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, hopefully it was good. I, I, Joe I didn't see any of it because he was late, but he had to work. Yeah, He's dude. a working man. Had to feed his kids. As you guys can tell, he probably has, like, six or seven kids at home. Got to feed the kids. Got to put, put food on the table. Plymouth, Plymouth Massachusetts. So Plym- Plymouth, Massachusetts. Pilgrims. Yeah, you've yeah. P- P- pilgrims. Hmm. <laughs> uh, all right. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Make sure to subscribe and all that stuff. Thank you guys for listening. And let's hop over to the interview with Jonah. Whoosh. All right, guys. So we're here with Jonah Walker. He is a pitcher at Tulane, and he has a crazy story. So I've known Jonah for a while. I think I'm oh, not really freshman year. From, from freshman year, because I was we were always keeping up with each other on like mm-hmm. Twitter and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's cra- I just remember you weren't on varsity until no. what senior year because yeah. of COVID. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> you committed before you played varsity, right? Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. So he committed D one before he played varsity. That's I mean I was going to say that's a testament to something, but that's just really rare. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, as you guys can see, so he committed to Hartford, and then but they the whole thing with Hartford happened. You yeah. Yeah. probably heard about that so they're going d3 so he decommitted and had to kind of reset and uh, his story's kind of crazy so we'll take it from the top but pretty much as you guys saw from the title he went from zero to like 20 plus d1 offers just overnight with a tweet like that's not even clickbait that's like a real thing mm-hmm. so we're going to talk about that and i'm really excited so uh first off who is jonah walker i'm a uh, pitcher from concord new hampshire mm-hmm. i got recruited and i go to tulane university i'm going into my sophomore year there your recruiting journey as we've talking about was kind of crazy so kind of just take us through what happened like what's your what's your story with that all right so my summer of going into my junior year so like my freshman sophomore year i was just kind of like a little bit of like above average pitcher like yeah. my my velo like freshman sophomore year was like 80 80 probably like 78 to 82 yep um I know me and you, like, in high school, like, freshman year, we would, like, kind of battle it yeah, out. Yeah, we were like, always trying to figure yeah. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I um, do remember that. Like, I feel it because we were, the, like, the ones that weren't on varsity. Yeah, like, all we the threw other... kind of harder yeah. than everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, like, dominated freshman year. <laughs> yeah, freshman year was fucking wild. Because uh, yeah. I threw probably, like, I don't know, 82, but as yeah. a freshman, like, that's gas. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so freshman, sophomore year, like, I was just kind of like, eh. And then I'm not sure what exactly happened. Like, I didn't even get in the weight room much, like, my sophomore year. Yeah. Or going into my junior year, like, that fall. 
I played in the Showcase League, yep. and I saw that my velo jumped a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like it was actually before that. So that summer, I I pitched. I was playing for my Legion team because I didn't play travel ball until a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I was pitching for my Legion team, and my velo got up like 85, 86, I remember when you hit 86 on Twitter. I was like, oh, yeah. like Jonah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Like my brother, we were playing a Legion game in Keene, and my brother had the pocket radar and behind home plate when I was pitching. Yeah. I, th- I threw a really good game. I like got up to like the 86, 87 in like the seventh inning. Yeah, wow. And my dude. brother's like checking the pocket radar. He's like, no way. And someone next to him had a stalker pro. He's like, that's crazy. Oh, that's, that's legit. Yeah. So that's when I kind of realized, like, you oh, had like, an you type thing. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. I didn't really think of, like, going to college for, like, baseball. I mean, I don't know. I wanted to go to, like, a big school. Yeah. But it didn't, like, baseball wasn't, like, a big thing for me yeah. then. Like, I maybe, like, D2 or D3. Like, I didn't, like, just go to college and maybe play baseball. Right. Um, and then that fall, I played in the Showcase League. I get recruited by University of Hartford. Yep. And I went on a, a, a visit there. Um, they offered me a scholarship. And so I committed. Yeah. So I, what was that? 2019, 2020? No, I think it was 2019. Yeah, yeah. It was going into COVID. Yeah. That was before going COVID. In, right before COVID. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So it was 2019. Um, I didn't have many other offers. Like the only other school that I was really talking to was Holy Cross, but like there wasn't much, like there wasn't much between that. Like yeah. there were no offers yeah. or anything. Yeah. So junior year hits, COVID obviously happened. Um, and like, I wanted to keep playing baseball. Like, I was still going to play summer ball that year with my travel team. Me and my older brother and my little brother, we would go down to Memorial Field in Concord, which yep. was our home field. Yep. And we would just throw live ABs to my little brother. Yeah. So, like, Nader, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a stud. He's a stud. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. going to be, he's yeah. Gonna be yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that, like, helped him get better, too, because mm-hmm. he was going, that would have been his freshman year. And then we would do, like, scrimmages. It'd be like a sandlot game. Yeah. Like, we'd call all our friends down. That's like, super we'd cool. play, like, a sandlot game. And yeah. it would be like, Guys who came home from college mm-hmm. to play, and then the high school guys, like all the Concord guys. Yep. We would all just come home and play. That's super cool. It was awesome. Yeah. Like, so was that during COVID or was that? Yeah, that was yeah, during COVID. That's so cool, dude. Yeah. yeah. I wish we did more of that. I was literally just throwing like bullpens and mm-hmm. just, I was, plus I was coming back from my shoulder. Yeah. That was just a pain. But that's really, so do you think that's where you started to like have your joy for baseball and you started realizing like you can, can you can compete with these college guys? Like, did yeah. you see that start happening then? Yeah. And then it kind of sparked like that. Cause I mean, interest. I'd never had, I'd yeah. never had like varsity experience then. Yeah. So like, right, I, yeah. I'm, that's still crazy to yeah. me, though. You should, yeah, <laughs> it's, just, so. it's one of those things. Exeter is kind of the same way, where like they didn't want to, unless they really had to, mm-hmm. or like really, like the kid really stood out. They weren't yeah. going to bring you up, which was wild. But then senior year, you dominated. Yeah. Like, what, what, were, what was your stat line? So th- I guess this kind of leads to like recruiting and stuff. What was your what were your senior year stats at Concord? Shoot, I had full. It was like a point. Oh, f- I looked at the other tweet last night. It was like a point five nine ERA or yeah. something. Yeah, it was zero point five nine. I think it was. 51 innings, 59 innings, something yeah. like that. It was in the tweet. So the yeah. tweet that got him recruited, it's in the tweet. I'll just put it up on the screen right here. Um, so just talk about, I mean, so you had to decommit from Hartford, yeah. right? Remember so that happened mid-season? It was a whole process. Yeah. So like we, it was like mid-season. Hartford had just made the Division I, um, the basketball championship, like the, the yeah, men's yeah. championship. March Madness, right? Yeah. Like two weeks after something came out their president he was like he didn't think the school was feasible for d1 athletics so crazy instead of going from d1 he was like oh we're going all the way down to d3 he was like it's more feasible for d3 than d1 that's wild so and i it was just happened just like that right yeah yeah like they it was it was suggestion like april uh-huh. and then the board of regents or whoever was they voted in may like we didn't even realize that they were going to vote on it like that's we just thought wild. it was like speculation yeah and they ended up voting on it, and we were like, "Shit! Like, yeah. what do we do?" Yeah. And basically, I was uncommitted again. Yeah. And this was that after was like my senior year. Right? Yeah. Spring this was after year, yeah. my senior year, like after the season was over. Right. So this like is, it's yeah. mid June now, and I have to find somewhere to go to school. Right. And before then, I go to walk on campus in August. That's crazy. So and you were very recruitable, like what eighty eight to ninety two, yeah. eighty eight to ninety one, touching ninety two type yeah. thing as a tall righty, and your stats were fucking mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. So like that's kind of spoke for itself. Yeah. So I remember you made that tweet. Did Carson help you with that tweet, or was it like yeah? So he yeah he like had a lot of connections because I guess there's a lot of coaches that went to UConn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, he helped me a lot. I, I just want to help you as like Evo. a New Hampshire guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The 603 Evo made the video of me, which yeah. I which oh, I asked them the, for. Yeah, 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 yeah. from the state championship game, and then I asked them to use it, and they let me. Yeah. I used the video, it posted it, and then like just a bunch of people reached out and to you help me. Flat ground, right? That was was yeah. I tagged flat ground. Flat ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It ended up getting now it's at like twenty four thousand views. Yeah. 
And that day alone, it was the most hectic day of my life. I'd say I had over 70 text messages from colleges. Like, Jeez. mind you, a lot of them were like JUCOs and like there were D1s, D2s, D3s, right. and JUCOs. So like I had the whole But it's like you kind of went from like zero, like no one really, I mean, yeah. I'm sure you're getting a little bit recruited. Well, yeah. no, because it happened so quick. Mm-hmm. So like no one recruiting you until yeah. to like everyone. <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't able to talk to anyone <laughs> yeah. after like right. until I released my NLI. Right. Because so I was mid-year. going to Hartford. Yeah. So once that happened, it was just like let the floodgates open. <laughs> so pretty much you were a righty, 88 to 92, mm-hmm. uncommitted as a senior with insane high school stats, made the tweet, yeah. and then overnight, like 70. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, so how many D1, it was like 20 plus D1s was, reaching out, right? Yeah, there were a lot of D1s. So where'd you go on visits at? So I had an, an official visit at Michigan State, and so basically they flew me out there, put me in a hotel, got to see the whole campus, and I really thought that I was going to go there. Like, I, they offered yeah. me a really good scholarship. Yeah. And I just actually, as I'm flying out to two, as I'm flying, like getting on the airport to go to, getting on the airplane to go to Michigan State, mm-hmm. I get a call from Tulane's head coach. Wild, okay. And I'm like, oh geez, <laughs> yeah, right, oh, like oh man, it's oh, Tulane, shit. yeah, uh, yeah, because like I mean, like Tulane has like a big background, like they've been to Omaha right. in the early 2000s, like they're usually predominantly a good school, uh, they're a good academic school. Um, so he calls me, and he's just like, we're joking around, like. He's like, oh, you don't want to go up there. It's cold up there. Like, <laughs> yeah, come down yeah. in the heat. Right. Like, so I, I scheduled my visit down there for the week after. I went down there. It was a sick visit. They put me in a nice hotel in downtown Louis- so New cool. Orleans. Yeah. Uh, they took me around campus, took me out to eat. Um, so they paid for all that stuff? Like, oh, yeah. That's so cool. They, man, so yeah. they, they're allowed to pay for your plane ticket um, in your hotel. They aren't allowed to pay for like your parents. Oh, okay. Or, yeah, I don't think they are. That's wild. Yeah, they aren't allowed to pay for your parents' plane ticket. I yeah. don't think, but they can pay for the hotel room yeah. type thing. Yeah, that's, I think that's so. so. That's weird. I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure, yeah. but but yeah, we went on the visit there, and I committed on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you were pretty much just like, I want to get out of New England, or was it just because like it was just, everything was just perfect? Like, yeah, I mean, a lot of I. I always thought like I'm always I've always thought of myself as like a homebody. Yeah. But my mom said when like we went to Michigan State and I had the visit there, she was like, You're not staying in New England. Mm. Like you're leaving. Yeah. And so I guess that's when I realized like I like it didn't matter to me like being home or away. Like it's still a plane ride. Like it's just a plane ride. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. Um Plus, you get to play in the heat, which yeah. is nice, like year round. It is nice. Like, uh, it does get really hot though. Yeah. But like but, I mean it is cool playing baseball and December and January outside, which I've never been able to do in yeah. my life. Yeah, neither have I. So yeah. I'm excited to go to California for the yeah, same reason. Exactly. It's like, I'll be able to throw a pen outside in mm-hmm. January, which is yeah. like wild. But yeah, dude. So what? So what's your biggest advice for like kids who are trying to get recruited? Like, what would you say to people? And kind of in your position, but maybe mm-hmm. you know, what would you say to them? Just put yourself out there. I mean, it like with me, all that it took was a tweet, right? And like. If you have connections with, like, your travel ball coach, they probably have connections with coaches. So, like, just reach out to your coaches. Use them as, like, a resource because they they can be more resourceful than you think. Um, but, yeah, just put yourself out there. I mean, I know there's a lot of, like, things that you, like, a lot of websites that will, like, you right. pay to get you recruited. But, like, you don't all it took me was a tweet. If you're a, if you're a dude, you're a dude type yeah. thing. Yeah, like, yeah. if you're throwing 90, like, you get recruited. Yeah. Like, it's just how it is. But, yeah, I think a lot of people who, like, you know, are throwing, like, 80 or being like, how can I get recruited and think, mm-hmm. like, the, the NCSAs or whatever will, like, get them to that school. But it's like, yeah. you are who like, you I, are. I used NCSA, like, early on, but, like, yeah, it didn't, so did I, yeah. I didn't really... It, didn't really it was nice to much. like see the schools and stuff and like know where the location and like mm-hmm. the size was, but it was like you can also look up all the information that they give you. Yeah, it's like, really just like taking out the middleman of like Google or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's like you don't really need it. Yeah. Like if you know, and then yeah, so I guess it's really just about putting yourself out there, like yeah. use like video as email a coaches, text yeah. coaches, call coaches, yeah. like yeah, just literally cold calling. It, can, yeah. it actually can work. I remember mm-hmm. people saying that. And I would I would do that like right in like October when I was like, or September when I was like, man, like I really got to commit, like mm-hmm. I got to figure it out. And I would just cold call people and they'd answer, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Or just leave a message. But um, yeah, so let's pivot off of Planet Two Lanes. So you get to Tulane, you're there, probably against the best competition you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. So what is the difference between like, you know, playing from New Hampshire high school baseball to like like D- D1, like real, like down yeah. south? Like what, what's the talent level? I mean, like, you hear this at every, about every D1 school. Like, everyone there was the best player in their high school. Right. Like, that is Tulane. And they were all – we had we had two guys in our class in my freshman class at Tulane get drafted out of high school. Really? Okay. Like, but they went to Tulane. They're, they're dudes, to- yeah. Yeah. Um, like, they both got dra- drafted out of high school. So, like, you're playing against guys who could have gone pro. Mm. Like, I'd never faced anyone that, like, really could have done that. 
before. I mean, maybe a couple that I like didn't really know of, but yeah, you're facing guys and you just have to be like perfect or else like you make a mistake, there's a home run. Like it's right. automatic. Right. If you miss the spot, just like from here to here, it's, yeah, yeah. they're going to turn on it. Yeah. yeah. That's good. It's wild. definitely, you, you definitely have to be more of a perfectionist. Like in high school, you can get away with throwing, blowing a fastball by a kid, especially in New Hampshire. Cause yeah. like, if you're 35, it's like, yeah. 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 Like there's not, you don't, there's maybe a handful of guys in New Hampshire to throw over 90, right. which I mean, I'm not trying to shit on New Hampshire baseball. No, like, it's just we like have the depth a, of it yeah. is just different, right? We right. just have like, it's not comparable to Georgia or right. Florida. Like, New Hampshire baseball, like it, I love it. Like it, it. But it's just, yeah, yeah. But it's I mean, just not the same. Only a, you can only get a couple guys per team who would like be guys on yeah. school. Yeah, it's just how it is. But yeah, man, that's really cool. All right, well, we won't go too much longer. But um, what are your what are your biggest goals in baseball and like beyond? Like, what do you want to achieve from baseball to your four years at Tulane, and then where do you see yourself in like a couple of years? Um, I definitely just want to keep developing, get better. Like my coaches have told me, I know this. Like everyone, like I, I know I can get better. Like I know my my ceiling's higher. Yep. So I mean, I'm not saying that in a cocky way. Like I just want to. I just know that. No, it's just like yeah, it's, it's objective you, fact. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm I'm a skinny 180 pound kid. Like I know if I put on 200 pounds, like if I get up to 200 pounds, yeah. like hopefully like mass equals mass. Gas, yeah, like yeah. Maybe. I mean, just like you science. I feel like yeah. that would <laughs> yeah. say you have more in the tank. Yeah. 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 But I mean, hopefully, just getting better at baseball and keep playing baseball as long as I can. Yeah. Like it doesn't necessarily mean like like obviously everyone's dream is going pro. Right. So do you want to like, play? Would you play? I mean, I guess yeah. you want to play pro ball. Yeah. 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 Like, but I mean, goal, like, but. I just need to keep developing. Like, right. I just want to keep playing as long as I can. And right. if at the end of the day, baseball doesn't work out, then I yeah. still have a good yeah, degree yeah, at yeah, Tulane. from Tulane, which is a great school, a good, right? good school. What are you majoring in? Uh, I'm, like, s- still kind of, like, undecided, yeah. but, like, something in the business. What do you want to go, What do you like, what would you want your career to be? Yeah, I, I haven't thought uh, about that. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. See, I'm lucky because, like, I kind of found something from, yeah. like, a young age. Like, I like making videos and mm-hmm. stuff, but it's, like, most, what are you, 19, 18, 19? Yeah, 19. 19 yeah, most 19-year-olds don't have any idea. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't have any, if it wasn't for, like, videos and stuff, I would have no yeah. clue what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, dude, it's cool that you get these next years to figure it out, yeah. and then you get to play D1 baseball, yeah. and then... And, I mean, I'm making, like, some of the best friends I've made in my life. Yeah. Like, I'm meeting kids from all over the country. Yeah. Like, the thing with Tulane is... It's like a giant melting pot. Like kids come from all over this, the country. Like, right. there's kids on my team alone. From we have a lot of Louisiana kids. We have a couple Florida guys, a couple Georgia guys. One of my closest friends is from Massachusetts. Super cool. A couple yeah. Wisconsin guys. Yeah, like everywhere. literally all over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, you just get so many different perspectives mm-hmm. and stuff. That's really cool. Yeah. Man. I probably should ask you this beforehand so you could have thought about it. But like, yeah. did anything crazy happen? Where you're just like, oh my god, like baseball is like different here, or like. Oh, the best player so, seen. So Mississippi State, the whole series we played against Mississippi State. So last year we Tulane went to Mississippi State and we ended up losing the series. Mm. So this year we played them at home. It's three game series before conference play started. And so Friday night we're facing Landon Sims. Okay, yeah. And he was their closer last year in Omaha. Like yeah, he's a dude. He's a dude. Yeah. And so it was sa- it's Saturday now. Um, and we. We get down to it like a ten to two lead, or we like we're down ten to two at some point, and then one of our freshmen, Brady Margot, he ends up hitting a grand slam. Oh, dude. his first his first hit of college baseball was a grand That's slam. That's so sick. So, yeah, yeah. So it's now it's ten to State. eight. Yeah. yeah. So now it's ten to eight, and so we had bases low, or we had runners on second and first, and or no, second and third. Simon Simon hits a he hits a sack fly into right like deep right field, and. It's obviously sack fly, like the runner from third sh- scoring. So there's a run. So mm-hmm. now it's ten nine, and our our guy on second, Gavin, he's like ridiculously fast. He ends up tagging up from second and scoring. No on way! The play. Like it was the most insane play. That's, like we, you I don't see put, that I'll put shit. the clip up yeah. on the screen. That's you don't crazy. See that shit. Yeah, cool, dude. Well, thanks for hopping on the pod, yeah, man. Anything course. you want to end the, the pod with? To say to the people? Just keep grinding. Yeah. Uh, well, not grinding. Um, keep moving forward. Just keep on, yeah. 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 Do do your thing. Believe in yourself. Yeah. What's your biggest goal for summer? Um, get bigger, stronger. Get a lot of innings yep. to because I didn't get that many this year, but get a lot of innings, develop, keep yep. getting better so that I can go out in there and fall. What's your velo goal for, I mean, I guess 95? What's your next milestone 95 yeah i've been like kind of like sitting like my max has been sitting like 91 92 so i just want maybe maybe just like start off with like a three just, yeah yeah three four. and then four and then you know <laughs> and just your, hopefully get up way there. Up. Yeah. yeah well thanks again dude i really appreciate yeah. it thank um, you for having me. It. yeah cool oh shit
What the hell was that? I'm going to show that. All right, guys. Thank you for watching and, and watching and or listening to the podcast. Really appreciate that. Um, let's show a little instant replay of what Joe just did. That was really funny. <laughs> and, and then, uh, yeah, so thank you guys. Make sure to drop a five star on Spotify. We are dropping podcasts every single Sunday and we're making TikToks and whatnot. So make sure to uh, like, subscribe, comment, blah, blah, blah. Joe, how are we feeling? What are we doing? Uh, like, subscribe, comment. Um, if Dan's going to show what just happened, um, don't like be concerned with my slap to my face it was more of like a like wake a wake up. me up yeah, kind of thing up. like we gotta film this yeah thing. but yeah. anyways yeah um thanks for all the support guys continue with all the love and um five star reviews everywhere please and scan this and qr scan code that qr code scan, right now putting these all around hold. yeah you can hold it you can sure yo yeah. everybody look it's not in the frame it's not in the frame whoa there it is it'll it'll lock in on it in a second wait for it to focus no it's on me it's locked on me i forgot i forgot it was locked up we put the focus on me well, don't just scan it if you just want to. Just scan the thing. And Dude, thanks, just guys. Just fucking scan it. And, and, um, and yeah, so thank you guys for watching. We'll see you thank guys you. next week for the new podcast. Peace. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating so much. Hit a pen and I pull up heavy. In the layout on a eddy. I got three rows around the valley. In New Dios, not for belly. Stay that money, I for Perry. I shoot droppers, call me Larry. Then in then Yonkers, I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor, hurry to heaven. They calling me the main. Had to slow down, I done bought too many chains. Call a robot, the engine, I mean it, bro.